Senator, thanks for joining us on uh, what has to be a very busy week for you. Thank you. I'm a grouch. Good to be with you. I was in uh, St. Louis yesterday, but I'm back to uh, Washington this morning, and uh, uh, we'll uh, see what happens. Certainly the international situation looks bad, and uh, <laughs> and there's enough domestic uh, problems as well, so there's plenty to plenty to do. The question is, can we get any of it done? Let's, let's first start um, internationally. Uh, as you were got, flying back to Washington, D.C., I'm sure you got word that uh, President Obama is going to send about 300 troops back to Iraq in some type of security uh, de detail. What are your thoughts as you watch this story un uh, unfold? Well, I, I assume that that's to protect uh, the embassy and the civilians working uh, in the embassy. Uh, we, had only, we only had about 100 uh, troops left there in various advisory kinds of capacities and uh, Obviously, now we've got to be concerned about uh, what, how we protect uh, the Americans that are there. I don't know beyond that if the president has any other uh, plan for uh, those, those troops on the ground or not. Uh, it's been my strong belief uh, since we totally left uh, Iraq that we would have made a big impact there if we'd have left some kind of stabilizing force in Iraq, and we didn't, and now the president's announced we're also not going to leave one in Afghanistan, and the exact same thing is likely to happen in Afghanistan that's happened in Iraq. I mean, McGraw, we, we, have, we still have stabilizing force in Korea. We have troops in Bosnia that have been there since President Clinton was president, and it makes an incredible difference if there's an American presence, and it's a good way to train our troops and have our troops ready for the overseas uh, issues that they may have to deal with. But, you know, the president made that mistake in 2011. I think he's announced he's going to make it again in Afghanistan. And uh, what could happen in Iraq could be devastating for our security if uh, this uh, ISIS is allowed to establish a big territorial a hold in the middle of uh, the most dangerous part of the world. It's a lot more dangerous than if you've got people in control of Afghanistan, because this is a place close to Europe. Uh, it's got plenty of money. It's got plenty of natural resources. Uh, and uh, this, is, uh, this is a real troubling development for our future security as well as uh, the security of the world. Uh, no easy answers, uh, leaving troops behind. Uh, many people say we don't want to be the world's policemen and we don't want a nation build, but you think leaving troops behind in some fashion would have been the best move? I do, and I think leaving the 10,000 or so troops that uh, the military said we should leave if we left anybody in Afghanistan would have been the best move. You know, there's nothing you can do and go back and undo uh, the failure of uh, the president and Prime Minister Maliki to make an agreement on how we'd leave troops behind. But you certainly don't need to repeat that same thing in Afghanistan that's had a president had three presidential elections now. Uh, women are treated much differently than they were under the Taliban. Uh, I was amazed when I heard uh, Secretary Clinton say the other day that the five sent back wouldn't really create a problem for us, but they'd create problems in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And uh, what a thing to come out of the mouth of a foreign secretary, of a former secretary of state, that we're sending people back. And by the way, uh, they're going to create problems for other countries that supposedly the United States has good relationships with, but they won't create any problems uh, for us. Nobody is saying that the ISIS, by the way, and Iraq uh, won't create problems for us, uh, but Secretary Clinton, I just I, I I I couldn't believe it when I heard her say, "Well, this is not really a big problem for us. These five guys will cause problems in countries that are supposedly friends of ours, but we let them go anyway." Senator Blunt, while you were here, I don't know if it was this this, this last trip, you had a chance to check out some of the VA hospitals around town. Uh, after the news that St. Louis has some of the longest wait times for VA patients. What did you think? Well, uh, you know, we've been trying to get more information on mental health waiting times at the Cochrane uh, facility and the Jefferson Barracks facility. Uh, you look at these lists, there are hundreds of 
of uh, VA facilities and for uh, St. Louis to be fifth and sixth on two different lists of the longest waiting times for specialty care and the lo- overall longest waiting times is, is totally unacceptable. Uh, the Kansas City Hospital is also way too high on that list, as is the one in Columbia. It's, uh, it's something that uh, I'd like to get answers to. We've asked questions of the VA, Senator McCaskill and I have. Uh, and right now, both uh, uh, the uh, Health and Human Services Department, which has a problem with this service center for the Obama health care plan out in, in Wittsville, and the VA have just gone radio silent. It's like they're trying to come up with their story as to how they would explain uh, these failures, and it's, it's very unacceptable. Our veterans, uh, I'm convinced, and have been for about a decade now, as I've advocated for more choices, more opportunities to go other places if the VA is either not meeting their needs or not convenient for their needs, and hopefully the House and Senate will agree on the bill that I co-sponsored in the Senate last week and the Senate passed uh, that gives veterans choices that they've never had before going forward and makes the VA have to compete in, in some ways to keep the to get and keep the uh, the uh, health care business of, of veterans. Senator, while we still have you, just uh, you were served in the House uh, leadership. Uh, what are your thoughts as you see Eric Cantor go down in his primary last week? Well, you know, I don't know nearly as much about the 7th District in Virginia as I do the 7th District in, in Missouri, so I'm not sure I can I, I can really comment on that with any, any sense of what happened. I think that the lesson there to everybody uh, in uh, the public service and who tries to represent people, whether it's in Jefferson City or Washington, D.C., uh, is that you always need to pay attention to the people you work for uh, and uh, there are only two ways to run for office, unopposed or uh, full out. Uh, anytime you've got an opponent on the ballot, uh, you need to take that opponent seriously, and no matter what your pollster says, and that appears to be something that uh, didn't happen in that campaign. find it interesting, since you're not uh, an expert on that 7th District in Virginia, you have decided to uh, not, not speak on something you don't know. Very different than, say, talk show hosts who speak all the time on things that they don't know anything about. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, when you've got to, got to talk every day for as long as you have to talk, you can't be held back by not being an expert. <laughs> That's exactly right. Don't, don't let that stop us. <laughs> Senator Blunt, uh, thanks for calling in. Be safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Hey, see you soon. You got it. Seven, 743 here, Big 550.